Hey guys, Quicksilver Gaming here, bringing you another episode about Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. This one's a little bit different as I'm going to review the patch notes for the major update, uh, version 1.4 that was just released Monday, October 16th. And boy, is this a big one. It's in, been in beta for quite a quite a bit. I've shown two small campaigns, one of the Italians in the 1930s and one of the French in the 1940s. And there's been more updates even since then, and since it is live now, thought we should review the patch itself and see what it is bringing to the naval battlefield. So, um, I won't read all of it, but I think the forward is always important. So it says, Hello Admirals, we are happy to announce the newest major update of Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. This update includes many new hulls, mainly cruisers, which were lacking so far in the game. The arsenal of available ships throughout the decades of campaign gameplay has been enriched immensely, and there is more, and I would completely agree with everything they said right there. We have added new gun models, 3D ship parts, we have optimized almost everything about the game, enhancing the realism and improving the overall game performance during the 3D battles and campaign gameplay. Um, and as I said, this is a massive update. It's one of the larger updates I've seen, uh, especially seeing as this game is past its 1.0, so it's um, out of free release technically. Um, some great footage here. So this, they're saying, is uh, essentially a Dido-class cruiser for the British, and one thing I love about this game is just all the textures, the lighting effects. I really love how this game looks overall, but Yes, as the Dido class cruiser or any variants can be made with great detail using the Advanced Scout Cruiser Hull of Britain. Absolutely beautiful. And patch 1.4, one of the biggest updates to it is 87 plus new hulls. The plus, um, what I will say there is there are 87 hulls and then there are a bunch of hulls that various nations utilize. Um, so I wonder if I can find an example really, really quick. The Compact Heavy Cruiser for Spain and China. So it's only one hull, but two different nations can use it, and since the nations generally have different guns, different towers, different things like that, they should look different for each nation, so something I really like. So keep that in mind. There are 87 hulls, but some of those hulls can be used for multiple nations. And this list is just monstrous, and I will do a very brief breakdown of every single one of these holes in-game, because I think that is something that a lot of players want to see, but it's a little difficult to parse through all of that data. I've done it for you, so I'll show off every single hull, and then I'll do just a quick um, auto-design to show you what the AI might design for those ships. Another beautiful picture. There are many new British cruiser hulls which can simulate most, if not all, the historical ship variants of the time period. Once again, I love the visuals of this game. I think the lighting on this game is amazing, the water textures are amazing. The only criticism I would have on visuals is it would have been so cool to add some of the camouflage or the deck colors of the various nations. So. Um, for example, like World War II Americans, those blue decks. Uh, World War II Italians, those barbershop poles on the very front of the ship. Um, for the, the British and the Italians, I know off the top of my head, the, the camouflage that they put on the side of the ships. Things like that. Just the more things you can add to the game, the more immersive it, it is, the more beautiful it is, um, the more engaging it is. But... Otherwise, I'll just say this game does look beautiful. I, I think the textures, the shades, the qualities, um, all of that is um, really draws me into the game. So there are some new guns. Uh, basically, everybody has new quad guns for all techs, all calibers, and all nations. Um, new British gun models for calibers up to 6-inch guns and for Mark III and IV techs. New French gun models for larger caliber guns of 17-inch and higher. For Mark 1 and 2 techs, new French 4 inch gun models for Mark 4 and 5 techs, and various fixes, scale repairs, improvements in all previous gun models. Now, here is something huge um, that I will probably play an 1890s campaign now 
and basically they have added a ton of hulls for those early years sort of between 1890 and 1930 to really fill in the gaps um we already had a bunch of world war one era ships but they really filled out like 1890 to about 1915 and then um from that 1920 to 1930 sweet spot so every or er, er, early battleships for all nations are added such as this usa hole once again i can't say enough about the the textures the the blends the shades the lighting beautiful beautiful um model here but um i i can verify looking through the various ship holes that i have seen that they have added a ton of early ship holes and that is greatly needed because to me between 1890 and 1910 is some of the most boring gameplay and hopefully that's a lot more exciting now as you have various different holes to choose from and holes that fill in gaps in the line there were nations that like they basically didn't have a good battleship for a while and good is a relative term because nothing's good between 1890 and 1910 but they're, they're just major, major holes. I won't read you through all of this, but basically optimizations in UI, faster campaign loading, yet to be determined, better combat performance, um, hopefully people with uh, lower end PCs really notice this. Um, I have a, I, I have a very, very good PC, so I haven't really noticed uh, frame drops or anything while playing but for those that have lower end pcs hopefully this really helps you out uh tooltips no longer obstruct so uh, sometimes when you would click on things the tool tips would um like take up too much of the screen or just obstruct certain things kind of annoying so we'll see exactly what they mean by that when we play um new armor penetration data tool this is really cool i'm gonna see if i can figure this out in game but should give you a better idea of what your gun can penetrate at various distances versus the different types of armor quality. Um, as it says, you'll be able to set it from default 0% up to 200%, which is indicative of the various armor qualities you can have in this game. And then ship visuals enhanced. Uh, in one of my beta campaigns, there were still some errors with the lifeboats clipping with guns so hopefully they figured all of that out it's not the biggest deal but you know this game is pretty it's one of the major draws to it for me so the better they can have the ships look the the more engaging the more drawn it is to me um and then here it just says the usa received a lot of new pre pre dreadnought hull variants which can represent sufficiently the time period um, another picture. This one actually seems a little low qu lower quality than the other pictures they had, but nonetheless still beautiful. I, I always love how they have the lighting in this game. The sun does um, reflect off of the holes correctly, and in-game you have a sun glare effect which affects your shooting, so I like that too. Um, other balances are ship design flexibility, so in theory the auto design will become faster, which should make campaign turns quicker we'll see if that is the case i will say auto designs do seem faster in the shared design builder so that at least looks like it's true um campaign ai update so essentially managing economy more efficiently better usage of land armies things like that we shall see if that looks right um and then the ai will also manage the fuel state of its ships in my two beta campaigns that was a little hit or miss. Um, it seemed like less ships went out on low fuel, but it seemed like ships still went out on low fuel or in the midst of battle went on low fuel because they went into the battle with like barely enough fuel to get away with it not being on low fuel. Uh, hull types have different limits of armor. This is a little controversial out there from what I've seen. There are people that absolutely hate this. There are people that love it. I love it. It's more historical. I think it makes the game more fun and more realistic. Um, I find it boring when ships are invincible. 
I, I like when guns can penetrate enemy ships and the limits of armor make sense like a light cruiser is called a light cruiser because it is light it is light on armor it utilizes speed not armor so a light cruiser should have a lot less armor than your regular heavy cruiser um, destroyers weren't known for having tons of armor uh, so I, I like that. I understand other people don't like it. Um, I'm not going to tell somebody that they're right or wrong. Everybody has their different ways of playing. Some people really enjoy creating super invincible ships. Some people really enjoy the more realistic historical aspect of the game. Um, personally, what I would have done is I would have created... I, it's probably tons of work, but I would have probably created an option in the game for people to have hull types that limit armor or not so that you cater to both sides of the crowd that would be my recommendation here um as i said for me i like this for other people they don't like it i think you should cater to both um ship weights balance over hull i think this is something that you don't necessarily notice as much as while you're playing but um maybe those people that play for a really long time have tons of hours have built tons of ships they'll notice this more ship cost balance overall very noticeable battleships as they should be are insanely expensive and they should be it um you shouldn't sit there and go well why would i build a cruiser when i could build a battleship for not much more um now it's like you could build five cruisers for one battleship type of thing so um the meta of building just battle cruisers or just battleships it probably still exists but i think there's more incentive now to build um these smaller ships to build destroyers to build light cruisers to build cruisers as battleships are insanely expensive um and i think that's a good thing personally improved torpedo detonation mechanics um that just means when your ammo on your torpedo is hit it doesn't wipe out all the torpedo ammo on the ship just for that one specific launcher just a nice quality of life penetration adjustments um guns penetrate more so along with lower uh, armor limits things should die more which to me just makes for a more enjoyable game and i get really bored when i have to sit there for 20 minutes on the fastest speed possible shooting the same ship over and over and over again because um it ricochets and blocks and all of that craziness shell ballistics adjustments um so just uh better fire rates or more historical fire rates um and then the mission generation system of the campaign got further improvements and port strike missions were improved to show the auto resolve transport losses so in two of my campaigns i was like why is this showing a battle where I have 15 transports and the enemy has a fleet and the only thing I can do is auto resolve? It's just showing you how you lose transports in the game now, which I think is neat. I, yeah, I'll say it's neat because it gives you an idea of where you're losing transports better before it would just be like the East Indian Ocean. And you're like, cool, why? Why in the East Indian Ocean? I don't understand. Now you know what ships are attacking you and sort of where the strikes are coming from so i do like that campaign can now be prolonged up to 1965 i'll say that's a good thing for those of you that start a campaign in 1940 um otherwise i sure i mean why not i it's a little bit weird because you can't obtain 1950s and 1960s tech but you know um why not and then custom battles can now be set to a date up to 1950, so essentially you can have all of the technology when creating a custom battle. The battle AI has been improved to keep more effective firing distance and keep its main formation closer to the enemy. Um, sounds like a nice quality of life update, we'll see if it works. And then barbette types have a new stat that improves flash fire protection, okay, pretty cool. And then various minor bug fixes that were reported, and I can tell you I've been, I won't say I've been active in the discussion threads, but I've been actively reading them. And it looks like the developers during this time period really took into account what people were saying. 
Obviously, they can't fix a lot of the major issues or things that the developers just don't want to fix, like submarines. Although they did do some submarine changes, but um, the developers did take a lot of what the community said were bugs, errors, issues, and fix them. And I will say not just bugs, but um, like they made submarines a little bit more viable, at least in their words. So. We'll see about that. I still don't really like submarines being in the game, but that's a different story. Um, then it says the campaign mechanics and turn time performance received major optimizations. We'll see if that is true, but um, looking at when I played through the beta, there were some things that I did notice um, for sure. Definitely economy-wise for the different nations, um, so that was nice to see. Then they did add five new Naval Academy missions. I won't go into too much depth on those as I'm not big onto the Naval Academy missions. Maybe in the future I'll do some sort of series going over the Naval Academy missions, but basically just an all-purpose light cruiser battle. Um, it's Germany with some a battle cruiser and cruisers versus the British with just light cruisers. Italy versus Austria-Hungary, a what if against Spain, cruiser fleet, and then rule them all. If you want to look at those more in depth, I recommend go and looking at the patch notes. Um, Battle AI has been improved to hold more coherent and effective formations. Usually they just blob. So it'll be interesting to see what these coherent and effective formations are because generally it's just this big circle blob um, and you just kind of shoot into the blob of the enemies and then randomly destroyers and light cruisers will go out to you, shoot their waves of torpedoes and then go back into the big giant blob um and then of course you know just all the generic stuff that they tell you one thing to note this is a major update basically everything is reset they say except shared designs um which there are people that have huge shared design folders and i i understand that that would suck to lose them all except all of their shared designs are going to be broken but I guess they can fix them from where they are as opposed to starting from scratch. So maybe that's the idea here. But all of your shared designs are going to be broken. So you're going to have to go in and fix all of those. Um, so that's just something of note. But absolutely massive patch. Um, and in a different video, I will go over all 87 of these new holes this video is already nearly 20 minutes long the 87 new holes will probably be a very very long video um and we shall see if i need to break it down into different parts or different uh different needs but hope you guys enjoyed this one thank you very much for watching as always guys until next time